Um, you talk about the, the place you were in and how down you were. And, you know, I've been in touch with you and, and we're friends and I've, you know, I've, I saw you guys play Rocklahoma shortly after everything with Chris Cornell and how you were feeling when you started kind of getting back out there a little bit, at least playing live. I know what the, the impact that had on you. And then of course, losing your producer Cato in that accident. I mean, it just, just really, really difficult stuff. So what was the process like for you to recover from all that? I know for, I know immediately after Chris Cornell passed away, you just basically shut down. You just basically, you even canceled the tour because of it. Right. Yeah. I bailed. I, uh, that devastated me. I mean, I, I, yeah, it, it devastated me as, as the, the first only word that comes to mind. And I wasn't in a good place to be public. I, I was kind of a mess. And I, so I, I canceled touring. I went, you know what, this is not, this is not, I can't get on stage every night and feign happiness and excitement that I'm here when I'm, I'm kind of, I'm falling apart inside. So we canceled. I went home to try to process what had happened and, and take some time. And I actually started writing and, uh, we were actually talking about, you know, with Kata, we were, we were talking about booking a studio and going in to make a new record. And then, bam, um, got the call about Kato. And that that was kind of the the nail in the coffin for me, I guess, in a, in a lot of ways, where it was just that kind of put me over the edge. If I kind of, I kind of gave up, Eddie. Like, I kind of just went, you know, fuck it. Like, what's the point of any of this? Like, I can't, I didn't know how to handle the grief. Um, and I went real down into into my own emotions and my own head and the substance abuse, you know, all all of that. that all, everything there were a that. lot of people really worried about you then, as you know, myself included. I <laughs> mean, I dropped you some text check checking on you, and I know a lot of people in your inner circle did. There there were really people very concerned about you at that time. It sounds like deservedly so. Yeah, and it was really. I mean, I am very thankful that I have such a great support group, but uh, it it really. No, it was bad there for a minute and and to make a long story short it was uh it was music because i didn't really know what to do anymore so i i turned to music started just by listening to records that i love and and trying to just get through each day and uh and that kind of turned into writing which i didn't really try to write this record it kind of just poured out of me and once that kind of started then it was like okay i have i have a start of an i have enough material here that we need to start recording and that led to the whole other process of how how the hell do we go about doing this now um which led us to jonathan wyman but uh it was uh it was the long it was a long road it's a long process and and i don't think it, you know it's grief and stuff like that it's it's not something loss you never get over it it's just something you learn how to live with um and i think this record all, all of that all the culmination of all of those emotions and all that shit we went through is really reflected in this record the interesting thing for people to know about your love of chris cornell and how much it impacted you and correct me if i'm wrong on this but you you didn't actually know him personally well at all if i'm not no. mistaken you were just a, a huge fan and he was a big influence on you but if i'm not mistaken you had told me shortly after that tragedy happened that you actually met Chris the for the first time because you were on tour with Soundgarden, opening for Soundgarden the night Chris died. But but I'm pretty sure you told me a story that he actually the first time you met him was the night that he later took his life. Right? That he you were standing. You told me some story. You, he came by you as you he was going off stage or something. Refresh my memory. Tell me if I'm right because I remember you telling me something like that. Um, not the first time I'd met him, but, uh, it was, uh, yeah, but, uh, I mean, I had spoken to him a few times on that tour. We'd had a couple nice conversations. Um, he, but, uh, I didn't, I certainly didn't know him well by any means. Uh, I just, I grew up idolizing and worshiping his music. Um, but yeah, I mean, that night was, it was the last show of the tour. Um, so I kind of, I stood outside to, I, you know, just wanted to say thanks and, and goodbye. And it was a, a brief sweet moment and uh we stayed in the parking lot hanging out after you know he left and we we're hanging out and waiting for the buses to leave and went to bed that night and the next morning woke up to the most tragic news ever and it and it hit me like a ton of bricks like i didn't i didn't know how to i'd never felt anything like that before yeah yeah and and that's i think that's the 
that's the thing. I mean, that speaks to how much he meant to you from a musical perspective, because the, oh, wow. the grief that you have is understandable, but it's coming from the place of just your love of how his music touched you more than anything, because it wasn't like you had a close personal bond with him, like you did say with Cato, where it was, you know, a different, a different thing. He was somebody that yeah. was very much in your world. Oh yeah. That was, that was a whole, that's, I think that that's why it was so, it was so, painful i mean not why but one of the reasons all of this was so painful it was such a one-two punch of like lost an idol and then you lost your best friend like bam bam right back to back and it just uh it was something i didn't really know how to yeah i'd never experienced anything even remotely close to it and i had no idea how to go about healing um and it took a long time but it's is music and baby steps that's what i learned just one little foot in front of the other until you you slowly you'll end up on the other side you know so needless to say, I'm, I'm sure that that some of these things that you've endured are certainly going to be manifested in this full record when we hear it, that that it's it's probably oh, yeah. there's there's a lot in in there. Safe to say it's, it's all in there. Yeah, it's pre, it's pretty much as bare as it can get. Um, did that did that process help you, Taylor? Did it help you get on the other side of it doing it through music? It, I think it was the only way I could have possibly gotten through it. So yeah, it helped me immensely. It was kind of, it was, it was therapy in, in a lot of ways, you know, kind of, I think I said this already, but it kind of just poured out. It wasn't something I had to try to write a song about something. It was just, it was so ingrained into who I became and who I was that there was no escaping anything. There was no trying to hide from it. So it was just, well, this is, this is the, this is the, the cards that life have dealt me right now. So, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have to, you know, either it was either give up death and give up or, you know, figure out how to move forward. And music was and I want I, I, I trusted music like I have my whole life. And, and I, I turned to that again. And I got to say, thank God for rock and roll. I, I know it sounds so cliche, but it, music, rock and roll saved my life like it full on did 100 percent. 